Billions of people consume video content every day through TV, the internet, and other points of access. Let's have a look at these consumption channels, starting where video began. Films. It's 1950. To watch the latest Hollywood release, you go to your local cinema or movie theater at the scheduled time, and you watch the film. That's our first channel, theater. It's 1970. Now programs are broadcast into your home. It's free to receive, so it's known as free to air. You rush home to watch your favorite series at 8 p.m. These programs are scheduled in what is called linear viewing. You can only watch each program while it is being broadcast, and everyone watching that TV network or channel is watching the same program. That's our second consumption channel, TV. Good times. It's 1980. You're bored of the broadcast programming, so you get pay TV. You pay a monthly fee to a cable provider, and now you have many more networks and channels to choose from. A few years later, you could choose a satellite provider instead. It's 2000. You love the film Gladiator, and you want to be able to watch it again at home. You could rent the DVD, but you decide to buy it. Now, you can watch it when you want. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. The end of waiting. The age of video on demand, or VOD, is here. It's 2020. You open up your smart TV, laptop, or even your phone, and you browse to a streaming service such as Netflix. You used to have to go to one of the traditional channels to get content, but these new services go over the top, or OTT, as it's known, and connect directly with consumers via the internet. Now you can watch the content you like whenever and wherever you want. As a consumer, you interact directly with theaters, retail, and OTT services. You buy a ticket from the theater or purchase a subscription from an OTT service. With TV, the story is a bit more complicated, as sometimes intermediaries are involved. Let's see how it works. First, we need to establish four terms. Channels, networks, broadcasters, and stations. What is the difference between these? When you watch HBO on TV, are you watching a channel, a network, a broadcaster, or a station? You will see these terms used inconsistently, but here's a good place to start. A channel is what you select when you press a button on your remote. It's a single menu of linear programming, like HBO or HBO2. A network is a central operation that provides programming for multiple regional or national channels. HBO and HBO2 are owned by parent company HBO Inc., which is a network. The channels provided can be paid or free to air. Networks who provide free to air channels are known as broadcasters, such as NBC in the US or BBC in the UK. TV stations offer one or more channels in small geographic areas, like a city. So who delivers their content directly to consumers? And who are the intermediaries? Here are three common models. Model 1. Broadcasters reach consumers with no intermediary. For example, in the UK, you just need a TV and aerial to watch BBC channels. In Model 2, TV networks reach consumers through intermediaries, TV stations. US networks like NBC and CBS feed programming to TV stations, also known as affiliates. Stations combine this programming with other local content, such as news, into a channel, which they then transmit to a local audience. Even though they are called broadcasters, the network doesn't transmit directly to consumers. Our third model is pay TV, which also has intermediaries. Most subscribers of a popular paid channel like ESPN don't pay the channel directly for access. They go to a cable or satellite provider, such as Comcast in the U.S., who installs a connection to their home. The consumer then pays Comcast for a bundle of hundreds of channels, which includes ESPN. Providers like Comcast are known as Multi-Channel Video Programming Distributors, or MVPDs. They are a major player in the ecosystem, as they own the relationship with the customer. Affiliate stations of networks are also included in those pay TV bundles, so they go through MVPDs as well. We have now seen how content meets the consumer. We call this consumption, and it is the last step in the value chain. Next, we'll look at the earlier steps in the value chain, starting with how content is made.